If I was painting something, then, you know, I'm more in control of that. But when it has to come through other people, through their filter, there's something kind of magical about mm. that. Well, this is, yeah, this is Johannes Luber, a great uh, piano player, composer. Uh, academic now, um, oh. father, uh, all sorts of other things. Uh, thanks for joining me um, for these three it's questions. My pleasure, nice. So the first question, why do you have music in your life? Um, it's a good question and I, I'm not entirely sure of the answer in some ways. It's sort of like, um, it's just the way it is. So like, I can't imagine it any differently, I think in, in some respects, you know, just as, you know, why do you have two arms? Why do you have, you know, any, anything in your life? It's just, uh, I think it's a part of who I am, um, a part of my personality and identity. So to not have it there would, would feel kind of incomplete in some ways. Do you remember a time when you? Do you remember a time when you didn't have it in your life? Uh, not really, because like I started playing the piano when I was ten, and before that, there was always music at home with my my folks, and um, you know people were singing songs, or both my parents played guitar, and um, so music was always around. So I guess it's always been a part of my life even before I was more actively doing it and, and playing it. And then from, you know, being in high school, I was always interested in, in writing music in some form. So I've always been kind of thinking about it in those terms. Um, and I guess it's weird to think, you know, when I, I think back as to how you sort of end up with a career in music. And there's, in some ways, it's sort of just, I feel like I fell into it a little bit. Um, not because I didn't love to do it, but... You know, I went to a, a school with a music program. All my friends are doing music. I just was like, oh, well, you know, I, I like music. I'm going to do that at uni. And you just kind of end up doing it. And in some ways, I think, you know, there's probably other stuff that I really would have liked that if I had have made a decision at that point to go, you know what, my, my friends are actually doing this and this is something that I'd like to do instead. It could have been really different. But at this stage, I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people, that yeah, you're guided by... Yeah, the social networks and friendships and it's like you want to hang out with those people more. So they're, they're doing music. You know, they could have been, you know, bikies or something in, a, in, yeah. another, in another life. <laughs> and then you get up and I you could know, have, you get I've, I've missed my calling. Yeah. <laughs> if I, go, yeah, if I could only ride a bike. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's, that's probably the, the big reason why I could never be a bikey. Yeah, yeah. Probably just shit myself way. trying to... <laughs> Being on a bike on a, uh, oh, yeah. So, so, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, music, uh, music is just, it, it's always been a part of my life and it's always something that, you know, I, I've enjoyed doing it. I feel like in, for the most part, I wouldn't say it's come easily, but the, I, I, I feel like I get, um, there's sort of a logic about music that I'm comfortable with. Mm. Um, you know, the way it fits together it doesn't, not to say that I'm like always great at every aspect of it but it, it makes sense to me in in a way that you know yeah just it feels comfortable i suppose yeah. well that probably brings us nicely to the second question which is how do you make music um uh, I, <laughs> I don't know uh, as, do you mean like in a practical sense like you know uh, i sit at a piano or uh, any any way you'd like to interpret the question i guess if, because i i mostly identify as a composer over a performer um i make music through other people um and with other people so you know i guess the, the making of music is something that you know there's a, a creative aspect to that that i do sometimes on my own sometimes with other people um and the, the how how do i do that I guess, you know, over time you kind of develop a, a certain set of tools or, or things that, you, you know, you know how to get things moving. And so I guess I've got my, you know, my um, 
bag of tricks, things that I go back to that I, that I can pull out and go, you know, this is what I'm going to start with. But I, I guess I'm, I'm always looking to find new stuff for that bag of tricks. And I, I think mm. in recent years, uh, I've always, you know, I'm really keen to talk to other people about what they do and um, see if I can find things that I hadn't thought of that might shape the kind of musical ideas I have. Um, the, the creative side of it is, I, is almost like a, a trade in a way. You know, I think of how I make music as being, you know, nine parts trade, one part inspiration, and the inspiration usually comes later down the track. So often making music is going, you know, here's a framework that I've made up, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, uh, thinking of, uh, you know, some kind of concept or, you know, what if kind of question. I think that's always a useful place to start, mm-hmm. you know. You know, what, what happens if I, if, um, you know, I start this piece just thinking about all the different sounds I can get out of a flute? You know, what happens if I start with, um, you know, the rhythm of the, the neighbours, you know, hammering on the wall? You know, it's just something that is kind of, that's usually not musical, but something that, that I can go, well, what happens if I take that into a realm of music? What does that look like? And then you start to hang things on it. And at some point through the procedural side of it, there'll be a point where I'm like, ah, I can, I can hear something coming together here. I kind of imagine it like a, a sculpt, a sculptor or um, a painter. If you just start, you know, if you have a big block of clay and you start poking holes in it. And at some point you go, I can see what this is starting to look like, but I, yeah. I didn't necessarily know what it was going to look like before that block was in front of me. Mm. You said you sort of uh, draw on sort of external ideas first um how often does it sort of does the the external ideas sort of come through to the end piece so if you sort of um Hmm. or do you just sort of start you you have an idea you start on your block of clay and then something completely different happens or usually that that starting kind of external maybe point of inspiration um is not a musical thing so i'd say it Mm. usually sticks through to the end of the piece shaping the decisions but there is a point where you know where i'm trying to i'm trying to make something that i want to listen to ultimately yeah so you know like i'm not going to go i'm i'm never dogmatic about my procedural choices at the expense of getting a result that i'm you know that i want to hear i suppose um so it yeah you know, it's a it's a combination. Stuff does change, and it do, and there are sort of revelations along the way where you think, okay, this is not what I what I thought. But I find keeping that initial you know limitation or reference point or whatever it is is often key to the identity of whatever I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, to to have it sound like its own thing rather than just you know hopefully not just sound like the same shit I wrote last <laughs> yeah. year or. It's like when your band says, oh, you wrote that song again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Look, there, yeah, you know, there are definitely things in my catalogue where, where I can see um, the repetition of ideas. And, and you know what? That's cool as well. I feel like I've, I've uh, come to terms or, you know, I've found a sort of peace with the idea mm. that you can reuse material, that, that that's okay. And sometimes, you know, in particular, there's a project I did, which is actually coming out on a CD very soon. Oh, really? Um, uh, with Daniel Sustager and Simon Jeans. And, um, and we, you know, for that, we had... One of the things we did was there was a series of sort of fragments and um, short musical ideas that we would play in varied combinations so we sort of had a bunch of you know eight or ten different fragments we'd start with one that would lead to improvisation and then someone would would start to play a different one and it was never in a set order and so through that um we did a recording project and in the editing phase i ended up with things that were you know the same like it was the same piece of the same fragment maybe occurring in a different position but it was sort of a different exploration of that idea and we ended up on the recording, you know, those some, sometimes two tracks with completely different names, are sort of 50% the same thing being mm. played uh, or the same, you know, uh, it's not exactly the same, but it is the same sort of fragment that starts with and then it develops in a slightly different direction. But just this idea that, you know, I could, I could take something I've already written and 
just sort of rework it and explore it in a different way. And, you know, people are like Bach and they like way back, but people have been mm. reusing material for various yeah. reasons. But uh, I feel like I feel quite comfortable with that now, rather than having to be completely new every time. Sometimes if I like something, you know, it's nice to revisit it and, and see what else you can do with it. Well, yeah, and it is, it's yours. So you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Mm. So back off. Yeah. <laughs> Do what I want. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do, Dad. Yeah. Oh. oh, awesome. Um, so the third question is, uh, what excites you musically right now? Um, it's, uh, it's hard at the moment because I've found, uh, you know, there's been so much going on in my life that it's been very hard to, to find um, musical inspiration or to, you know, to find the time to kind of explore stuff. But I guess, um, you know, what, it, what continues to excite me is the unknown of trying to make music with someone else. Yeah. So, so yeah, what, what inspires me is the process of, of making music even more than the outcome. Um, so that I, that the, the unknown of getting together with someone and going, well, how do we, how do we do this? How do you, how do you make music? You know, what are we, um, what are some ideas to explore and, and that kind of, um, you know, setting up a, a, an idea and, and allowing yourself to explore that idea. Um, that's what excites me about listening to music, uh, or what excites me about making music. Mm. Um, and then that process of, of getting, of having something that you've created getting other people to play that which you know as in the kind of music i make is usually what happens i'm not usually i'm not often involved in my own music as a performer mm. seeing what things come to light out of that and seeing the perspective that other people bring to it or the um the kind of sound that results that i wasn't expecting mm. um yeah well, there's something about doing something creative and, and then having it kind of come to life. That mm. it's, is, a, it's a different uh, satisfaction to performing. I mean, I love, still love performing mm. music. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that, but it's a very, it's a different, it's a different satisfaction for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, you know, that the experience of making something and then having it come to life in, in that sort of temporal way, like it, it's like, I guess, it's, I imagine it's like, you know, writing a play and you have it performed or something that, that actually, you know, it can't, that thing can't exist in, in my head alone. Like, a, like mm. a, if I was painting something, then, you know, I'm more in control of that. But when it has to come through other people, through their filter, there's something kind of magical about mm. that. Yeah. I think. And yeah. And I still feel very, very lucky that, I still have people that are willing to do that <laughs> with me and for yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just bl blows my mind every time. <laughs> yeah. An ever dwindling pool of people that are, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I piss one off and then someone else comes in to, to yeah, step in and help it out. Yeah. Yeah. Just can't You're get lucky. You're lucky there are so many jazz musicians in Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for answering those questions. It was really, yeah, it was a really interesting perspective on the questions. So thank you. And it's my uh, pleasure. Thanks for having yeah. me. Nice.